So Patrick, the cows come up um, over the underpass here. Yep. And we're looking at a, a wide entry. So uh, for the, when the cows come in, when they're heading to the parlour, they're heading left here, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. No, I, I, the parlour is down here, and um, uh, in the meantime, I'm, I'm sort of not going ahead with the, 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 the rotary um, just to see how things go yeah. because the world has changed a lot since yeah. I even started this shed. Yeah. So I'll be intending to use one of the passages, probably the centre passage, closing off the cubits completely in the summertime once the cows go out okay. because I don't want them to lie in them. And then we'll run down, we're going to modify <laughs> a, a, an existing building down here and let the entrance into the, the lower side of the, uh, the collecting right. yard. So, so this was one of your original sheds? So yes, this is the original shed. On. So yep. how many cubicles were in that? Yeah, there was 109 cubicles in that shed. Yeah. Okay, so we kept that because the, they were lo they're, they're, they're modern type of cubicles and the cows yeah. love it. Okay. Um, so then the, um, we extended, the, we took the gable off uh, the existing shed when we built this shed and we've merged the two together. So you can see this bay yeah. here is an extra bay on it. Okay, so it's and a nice, nice wide yep. access here. Yep, so the cows, um, but you can see this is one of the, the issues here, and it was an issue I had in Simon had highlighted it to me. That was the original shed. That, that was always too narrow. Yeah. Okay. That, that passage was always too narrow. So we made the new passages wider than that, um, because there was it was always very dirty, and all cows were sore on each other in that. And we had a dead. There were dead end passages. So like again, bad idea. Yeah. So everything can circulate here. Okay. At this stage. So we have a bit of work to do. There's a modification on the scraper here to get to come this way. But fine. We're working on all that, and we have a few extra cables to add. But we just okay. need to get using as much of the shed as we could. What's this idea here? So yeah, that's uh, okay. an area to store stuff uh, like the sawdust and the sawdust dispenser. Uh, we're currently having a lower shed, and just when I was working through this, it's rather than to have a couple extra cubicles, we just have a store inside the shed. So yeah. it's super. I know it's not. I mean, a door on it, and we needed to put a, a, an electric point onto it for the chargers. But um, ultimately, that's where the any equipment needed for keeping the shed clean will be on there. So yeah, which is convenient relative. Sure. It's a, it's a struggle it's in the for some people. Yeah, coming yep. so far. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because you can imagine that when the cows are in here in the wintertime, you don't want to be sort of opening the gates, you want to have everything in them, so it's yeah. uh, just a little addition to it. So due to the word, I presume you put all your feed passages internally? Yes, yeah. This is your first yep. one? Yeah, this is the first here, okay, and then you are feeding both sides of it. So the whole idea here is to have enough space to feed all the cows at the same time. Um, there is, uh, if you measure it up here, 320 cows need at the same time. Okay. We do a fair bit of buffer feeding and we have to at certain times of the year, just with the variability in the weather. So we have that option now, which we didn't have before. So you can feed all your 320 cows together? Uh, all together, yeah. yes. There's no That's space. And why is that a help to you? But from a buffer feeding point of view, if, yeah. if the cows are coming in, we leave them out on grass during the night and daytime, but if we want to give them an extra two or three kilos of, say, silage or, or maybe a mix, they, they'll eat it over milking. So they come in here, eat it, and they're back out to the fields. <clears> and what's happened before when we did this, younger cows or older cows get excluded. So you'd have 150 of the cows getting something and 150 getting nothing. Okay. Now they all get it at the same time. They all can get, okay. obviously you're going to get better performance from the weaker cows. Yeah. So when I come in here, a couple of things come to mind is the, the pitch and the roof, um, it's bright and it's also uh, quite airy here. What, you know, your design feature there. You... Yeah, so when, when I designed the shed along with Seamus, uh, obviously I had plans from, from Simon through yourselves, and um, you know, Simon had made various recommendations in terms of the shed, but it wasn't a detailed plan in terms of the design of the shed. McMenamin's like designed sheds. Uh, and uh, there was a shed, in, uh, my brother in Bally Hayes Ag College has uh, put up a shed and, and he has a bit of experience in building sheds and he was very adamant about the 15 degree pitch in the roof and also to have no spaces in the roof but to have the, the sides open and the top open so that you effectively have the stack effect of moving the air out of the shed. It's, it's, it's better for obviously better quality air in the shed but also it takes less pressure of, of condensation on the roof because you have an air movement up there so you hopefully will have uh, less damage to the roof over time. Um, okay. So that's a 15 degree pitch there and um, there's no gaps in the roof. And then the light was a very important thing for me and for, in fairness to my Chagas advisor, Tommy Doherty, um, would have given me a bit of help in designing this as well. And he was adamant about light. He says yeah. it's hugely important to yeah. cows psychologically and to people. Yes. Uh, you want to, as well as having a nice place for cows, you want a place that people like to work on as well. Correct, it's yeah. very bright. Yeah. And a lot of bracing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Seamus was adamant about the bracing because there's a, it's, a, it's nearly 10 metres tall at the, at the, uh, the, the centre and there's a, a lot of wind up here, so you need to be able to handle the wind. So I've been very impressed when you come here in a storm, we've had a few last winter time, and you see those, every one of those braces actually being tensioned. Okay. You, you need it all. So, okay. yeah, that's so the feed passage on this side is a slatted tank then? Yeah, yeah, it's a slatted tank, um, and yeah, it's wide, it's 16 foot 6, so the slats came from, uh, from Tracy's in Enniskillen. Uh, the local slat suppliers didn't do those wide slats, they're nine inch deep. Um, it's the first time my building contractor, Noel, has ever done a tank that wide. There's extra capacity in it, but you have obviously space for cows to eat, cows to come out of cubicles, and you have space in the centre then. So, yeah. uh, what weight again did you say? 16 foot. 16. 16. Okay, and depth yeah. of the tank? The, uh, eight foot. Eight foot, eight okay. Foot, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, there's the 200 and 
uh, 212 new cubicles in this house here. So uh, Condon's uh, in County Louth did the cubicles for me, and okay. the mats, they're the well and mattress. Okay. So, uh, and you have a few cra four crossovers in yeah, total across yeah, the whole yeah, 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 and the cows love those crossovers. <coughs> they, they absolutely, they, they, those centre ones there, uh, same as Adam about that, that you need the crossovers. is too long. In our existing shed, there was no crossovers, but he said it makes a massive difference. And I know the cows just, they, it's incredible how quick they can come out of those cubicles to feed. Okay. If you start to feed them. You have another crossing then further up? Yeah, that's the cross feed passage for crossing yeah, milking. Yeah, that, that takes the cows back into, so they can circulate here. Yeah. So they can go back into the milking, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So they, they can come across the two ends. So the idea as well, because in the winter time, we, we'd be starting drying cows off, and we actually do supply a little bit of milk, milk over the winter from late calving cows. Yeah. So at certain times, you need to divide this into sub pens. So we yes. the potential for six sub pens in this. Yes. And so, uh, for example, only yesterday we let take the last dry cows out, but there's 12 or 14 dry cows down in a corner of the shed. We took them down to the cabin facilities to okay. be calving the next week or two. Okay. And the job's all done. So this is the first day that the whole shed is available to the uh, milking cows. Right. What way to passage here then? That's uh, it was a ten foot passage. Okay. This the two f two foot wider than the existing. Just that was too narrow. Yes. Foot's too narrow. That's <coughs> big difference there. Yeah. From the cow get cows coming off the cubicles and then just not knocking each other. Yeah. Not you know it's yeah. Yeah. You can see that it's important. And then the troughs, the this tip over troughs I got from Condon's are they're very easy to keep them clean. So. Yeah. And so again, the same. Yeah, the same width. And then I thought I could keep this side of it open until we built the shed. And the shear, it was just impossible. We had to see this end of it. You know, a lot of, if you go down the country, you see a lot of sheds op uh, open yeah. on this side of it here. Yeah. But the wind, it just never It's just a different open. environment up here. Yeah. Yeah, but probably people don't realise the reality of the weather up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it never, the wind, it's very rare you get a calm day here. Yeah. And it's a wind tunnel. So and this shed is built effectively in the wind tunnel. And when we, 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 we had this end of the shed done and we didn't have the doors on it and we were actually had cows inside and they hated the shed. They absolutely detested it. It's yeah. only when we sealed that and put the doors on it that the cows actually started moving into the shed. Okay, yeah. yeah. They stayed in the old shed until this was done. And it's like flicking a switch, Bertie. When we put the doors on it, sealed it up, the cows all came up to it. Yeah. They don't like drafts. Yeah. No, and just that's, I had to do it. It was actually not a big extra cost to do that, but and it, it looks excessive. But I've no regrets because you can see I have my fertilizer stored in there. So I mean, it was, yeah, it's a it's a good store as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's a good way of passage. Again, uh, both Simon and my brother were adamant about the what the machinery is getting bigger and bigger all the time. Yeah, and you just don't want yeah. to build it once. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. the passage is the same. That's a twenty foot passage. That's a sixteen foot passage. The machinery you just need that for comfort in terms of the machinery going through it. Yeah, we're looking at. Um, your aeration system for slurry, yeah. um, Linton Robinson put it in. Yeah. Uh, why did you put in a, an aeration system? Well, they're big tanks, right? So they're they're nearly 80 meters long. Okay. So and they're um, the shed's about 40 meters wide. So it was always going to be a challenge to mix a tank that big. Um, and we just decided to store. I have an overground tank, and the big issue of the rainfall, we have to go and put a roof on that. So because like, big rainfall here. So you, my experience is that if we can keep the water off it and and try and keep the tanks underneath the sheds as we had in some of our older sheds, it generally works very well for us. Um, so we wanted, the, we needed the capacity, so we built the big tanks uh, when we were doing the shed. And then just, I'd seen it in other farms about trying to get the slurry mixed. And um, like I met Trevor at the plough match a couple of years ago and I was talking through that with him and then he brought me to see a few farms and a few of my own discussion group have them and so they generally were very pleased with it. And it looked like a good, a good machine and I liked you know, their story in that sense. Okay. But another big advantage is obviously the story is ready to go out at any stage. Okay. And, and so that's the reality, is that that is the fact? Yeah. yeah. And uh, again, I've been, people have been laughing at me about my timing and that's like the fertilizer has gone up between a half and three times. So I was always intent to try and get better value from my slurry in the springtime. Mm. One of the challenges here, we have our own tanker, but um, it's too heavy for going on the ground. And so the whole umbilical cord uh, on the, with the contractor is the way to go in my mind. So I set that up, but our tanks were all over the place. We were hauling slurry to other yards because we didn't have the capacity here. And we needed the slurry here to be able to put it out in the springtime. Yeah. And we needed it mixed at all stages. So this is the first spring we were able to do that. So okay. come 1st of February, we were able to go out and do about uh, three quarters of the grazing platform okay. at that stage. And then we put the rest of it out af as we grazed it after the cows. Okay. And then we did all the silage ground there last week. Okay. So uh, we were able to get the tanks emptied effectively with the contractor with the umbilical pipe. So okay. very so, efficient. So briefly, what, what are we looking at here? What what is What are the makeup of the system? Yeah, so there's a network of pipes at the bottom of the tank. They went into it's, um, so there's 24 circuits on it, okay. So and each of those pipes is into a circuit on the bottom of the tank over the whole basis, and they come up uh, into this. Uh, this is the compressor, and then the compressor is, creates the air and into a manifold on top of the pipes there. Yeah. And then there's a, there's a there's a valve in each of those pipes, and then the computer here controls that, so she effectively sends the air to each uh, circuit then for about two minutes, 
and it's on a rotation basis. So one circuit and then she finishes that circuit, closes it off, opens up the next circuit, and just goes around the, the 24 different sections. Uh, and she does that twice over the night time. It's all in night with electricity. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is it heavy on power or not? Yeah, or? Well, it's hard to quantify it yeah. yet. Um, you know, not we've, we, uh, it's something I can't answer for yeah. definite. Yeah. But because it's a nitrate, um, that's going to be significantly cheaper than during the daytime. Okay. And it was very well mixed. Okay. Not, uh, the tank's more or less empty, so I intend to put it down to one mix now during the nighttime. I think okay. they'll work around at that. Now, we had sorry, quite watery because we moved our water up to it during the winter time. Because the, I know from experience, the more water, the slurry, the better it is to grow uh, grass. Okay. Yeah. So a, a dairy farmer, as a dairy farmer, I have loads of dirty water. Okay. And uh, just manage that properly, you'll have a lovely slurry. Okay. Just looking at the finish on the shed here, you know, just the way the door is finished there relative and uh, yeah. the overlap. Yeah. Could you describe what? Yeah, so this is this was an innovation by Seamus McMahon, the, the, the company that put up the shed for me, McMahon Engineering, and Seamus is the, the boss in that. And uh, this is an innovation he, d he developed recently where in the past we would have had, had uh, flashing over the top of the door as yeah. the rain comes down over the edge. So we basically set out the top part of the shed and uh, then the doors are, are running underneath the, the top part so that any rain that comes down uh, flows down on the outside of the doors and there's no flashing. Uh, the flashing tends to be vulnerable for wind damage and especially we're on the w the western side of the shed here so it gets huge wind okay so we had to design this shed and with that in mind right so it's, it's it's a very neat finish and the doors obviously are essential it was amazing we had to get cows into that shed before it was finished last uh, september october and uh, it was open with the doors at uh, this end and because the wind comes from the side the cows hated the shed mm. it's only when the door isn't on and and even now if you open those doors the amount of air comes into the shed is incredible right. so the gen even through winter time we've had to keep the doors closed during the daytime because it's incredible the effect it has but the whole thing is, is very well sealed up at this site yes, it um, looks well yeah it's, it's, a, it's a lovely finish now i'm very yeah. pleased with the shed very good so patrick we came out here now to have a look at the silage bits this is the first yeah. thing you did yep yeah. uh why was it the first thing you did yeah because i, I hadn't got capacity for silage and i had an, an effluent problem and look, the reality is we can't have we can't have dirty water problems. We have to manage dirty water. Yeah. So uh, we had a, an earthen bank silage pits here where we were standing, and it wasn't keeping the effluent. So I, I just had to deal with that. So then we took away that earthen bank um, silage pit, and we built these two concrete pits. Okay. And so we've captured the effluent, and we have capacity. So we dug them into the hills. So actually, we don't backfill, but you could backfill if you wanted in the future. If you were at a bigger bigger stage, you could put barriers to the front. But my contractor prefers load from the floor, so that's the okay. way he wants to fill them. So, so he's loads of space as a, a contractor, yeah. which he probably yeah. enjoys. Yeah, he loves that. Yeah, no, it's making a big difference to him, you know. So because the, the the machinery is big and they need space. Yeah. So you could have two loaders in that. You could have two. The, those pits are big enough that you could have two self propelled feeding into them. And okay. uh, oh, it doesn't take long. To, and then they're very easy covered too. The way they so are. am I right in saying too in the plan we've created with you is uh, there's going to be a meal store over there? That's in right. Time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's there's I got the plan for the meal store here. So it yeah. leaves your meal beside your uh, your silage then. Yeah, yeah. And as we walk over here, then you have yeah. you have space again. But again, it's within mind to put maybe a couple of smaller pits. Yes, yeah. Well, I plan for one big pit, but there's no reason why I couldn't split them into two small pits. Yes. They're grand. Like your first cut fills that, your second cut fills that. Now we have another pit down where we use. Um, but just, I probably need a few smaller pits rather than another big pit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So why would you put in the likes of that then? Um, it, well, the, your dry cow, the feed for your dry cow is very important. And I take some uh, hay meadow silage from, from neighbours of mine. So it's, it's poor quality silage in terms of the digestibility, but it's ideal for dry cows. We would have fed a good bit of straw in the past. Straw is too expensive. Right. And so I've gone away completely from straw because of the cost of it. And we've used this poor quality sort of 65, 66 DMD Rough silage kind of, yeah, yeah. for dry cows. And yeah. it has been brilliant. Okay. Because the worst thing you can do with dry cows is feed them too good a quality silage. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's a pit for that. <laughs> okay. And then like a maize is something some people try around here. Maybe if the climate changes and it gets a bit warmer, it might work more effectively. But uh, it's, it's something I don't do. But we never know what happens in the future. Yeah. And so maybe in time, if you decide to proceed with the rotary, the rotary goes here then? Yeah, the rotary goes there. Yeah. The collecting yard the far side of it. Yeah. And these buildings will be all demolished. Yeah. Okay. okay. Look, they, you can see they're, they, they owe me nothing. My father put them up in 1972. So yeah. They're, yeah. they're older than I am. And uh, they've got a lot of value. But so two of those are not being used now. We just immediately stopped using them once we built the new okay. shed. We're still using this one here. But if I'm going to keep using it, I need to do a bit of work inside it. Yeah. But look, I have options. Yeah. I have plenty of capacity now. And, yeah. um, and those options. buildings have served their function. And yeah, absolutely. they brought you to here today. They anyway, whatever. It's, yep. just, it's progress. Yep. Yeah. And we just held off. And uh, a lot of farmers would sort of build year and year and build a wee bit and a wee bit and a wee bit. And I just held off for a while, planned the whole thing out and went with it and yeah. obviously got the mon money from the bank to do it and pay it back over a period of time. But yeah. um, I never thought that the inflation would come the way it has in the last yeah. year. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's a big change. Yeah, no. fair, fair enough. So maybe just to finish, Patrick, on, on inflation and the reality of the world we're in at the moment, you mentioned it or whatever, like so building today versus yeah. uh, building, you know, when you started planning for this yeah. two or three, four I years know, ago. I know. Like, uh, we, 
you know, nailing down the price of the materials and, and doing the deal in the shed. Um, when I went to, I, I have a figure that it cost me and I went to my insurance company and I gave it to them and they instantly doubled it. And told me that because I'll bear in mind that it's a self build, so it's cheaper than if I brought an overall contractor. Yeah. yeah, that was the saving to me. Um, but if I went today and I, they told me if I went and got a contractor to build this shed today, it was double what I paid for it, and that's okay. in the space of 18 months. It's yeah. frightening, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the world we're in, yeah. No, so it's probably a time for pause for some people. Well, it's a pause for me too, in the sense yeah. I've spent a lot of money here, we we'll just have to batten down the hatches and see where it all goes. But yeah, look, hopefully, there'll be a bit of sense coming back into everything, but yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Tr it's very tough for anybody involved in it at the minute, yeah, yeah. So no, well aware anyway in your shed. Thank it's you. A fabulous project and we're glad to have some part yeah, of it. Yeah, and thanks very much for the, the help at the, at the start. As I say, I was um, a, a big believer in planning yeah. and um, like um, Agri, uh, Grass Tech give a, a, you know, a great help in that. And yeah. It's so easy to sort of experiment on in paper yes, and with computers than to actually do it. And when I started building this here, I wanted this done, I wanted this done and, and the, the contractor was saying, you know, we never did it like this before. And he says, no, I want it done this way. And if you talk to the contractors, you know, he said he knew what he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then when, when your tanks and your shed come together, if there's some stakes or there's something there, they don't, they don't blend together and then there's problems and then the contractors may blame each other. But uh, like the whole thing worked incredibly well and everybody, in fairness, all the contractors. And then the other thing is like, I'm really pleased with the quality of workmanship. You can see that. And every contractor I had were stepping up. They, yeah. Everyone wanted to do that. Nobody wanted to let yeah. the project down. No. And it was really It makes a difference have it well finished. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you're looking at it for the rest of your That's life. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And the small things count. Yeah. No, sure. Look, thank you for your time, Patrick. Very good, Bertie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.